Sports Appearances. Now joining me is Joseph Karioki, Communications Manager from the International Justice Mission. And from Chris Sambu's report, 438, that's just the number that has been at least directly linked to police officers. I think that's a very high number for victims of forced disappearances, Joseph. Yeah, and, and I can't say that that is a, uh, it's an exhaustive number because I think this year alone we've had 71 killings that have happened uh, that the Missing Voices website has recorded. And these are verified figures. And uh, because Missing Voices is not all over the country, uh, we cannot say f f with certainty that it's only that 71. And you see this, the year is still young. And uh, the sad thing also, we have a big figure of, uh, of around 157 people who have just disappeared totally without uh, a trace. And uh, this is why today uh, we were marking the International uh, Day of Victims of Enforced Disappearance. Because these people have left home, they have disappeared without a trace, and no one can, uh, can tell where they are. Right. Uh, and, and in a country where we have an actual force that is supposed to ensure security for each and every one of us. Um, I'd, I'd put this question out there because you look at numbers like 71 being the figure that has been on record to have disappeared this year alone or been killed, killed. by police officers mm. this particular year alone. That's a big number. Look at it as 71 different families that have been aggrieved. How then do we go um, in pursuing justice for these victims, I'd ask? I think uh, if you were there, and I think, uh, I, th I think Chris was there at the National Museum where we were marking these days, there were so many families that had come. In fact, there was one case where we have 22 families, mothers and victims who have, uh, have been helped by IJM. They filed a, a, a petition in court to sue uh, the government for the killings of their loved ones, and they have never found justice. So. We at IJM, we take these cases because we believe that uh, if someone has been uh, uh, illegally killed, then that family must get justice because we are finding a lot of uh, problem. And you know, if I take you back to, to a case that happened even at, uh, to, to our colleagues, right. I think in 20... You, you did mention that, yes. um, the case of Joseph Mwendo, Willie Kimani and Joseph Mwiruri. This is one that actually caused you and called you to action now. Take yes, me around that. yes, yes. I think uh, this is a very sad case of uh, enforced disappearance because uh, Joseph Mwenda was a Boda Boda rider. And this Boda Boda rider, uh, he was ha doing his own business and one day he was shot by a police officer. When he was shot by a police officer, he decided to go and report the case to IPOA, Independent Policing Oversight Authority, that is a civilian oversight authority that kind of uh, uh, oversight the police. Right. So after reporting that case, Joseph had started getting some threats. And then he came all the way to IJM, International Justice Mission, and we took his case. And his case was going on in Mavoko Law Court in Machakos. Right. And then one day, when they went to court on June 23, uh, 2016, when they were leaving court, mm. they were abducted. The three of them, uh, Willie Kimani, uh, IJM lawyer, Joseph Atmuena, the client, and Joseph Miruri, a, uh, a driver. And for the whole day, they were not there. They, they were not found. For a whole week, and I know this is a case that many Kenyans know, for a whole week, they were being looked for all over all the mortuaries in the country, but they were not found. They were found after on July, on June thirtieth, their bodies dumped in uh, Oldonyo Sabuk River, where they had when they looked at them, they had been tortured uh, badly, and and that is what we are talking about because these are people. I mean, this is a lawyer who had done nothing wrong. He was just protecting someone who had been abused by police officers. And because this police officer did not want uh, to, he did not want to face the law in court because we were taking this case legally in court because he didn't want to, 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 to follow this uh, uh, case, then he decided to do what I not want to talk about it so much because this is a case that is still ongoing. Right. And uh, 38 witnesses have already testified. So, but this is 
kind of uh, the challenge that we the have. Exact fail and challenge that we actually have yes. going on in Kenya right now. Mm. Um, that reflects now to many other cases. Earlier this year, much has been talked about a student carried from minor, yes. shot dead, um, coming from watching a game of football. Yeah. And then the police officers did claim afterwards that he was actually part of a gang. How often do we get such cases of either something being planted or a situation where there are allegations that cannot be proved and it doesn't even get to the point now of it going to court and ask? No, I think these are, these are cases that happen a lot in uh, informal settlements, especially in Dandora, Madare, uh, Kibera. These are normal things. I think, in fact, even today, they were saying that uh, the life standards, I mean, are different for them because for them, if a young man is walking at night, there are illegal curfews in those areas because it's understandable that there's, the crime there is, the rate is high. But also, this does not mean that uh, officers should use excess force in kind of trying to control this cr uh, crime. Because if you look at the statistics this year, I think in April alone, from our statistics, we had 13, 13 young men who were killed in April. And this is in, I think seven of them were killed in uh, one place, I think in industrial area. And when you look at this, how do you kill eight people? at once. Eight, eight people. And when you do post-mortems, you find that these people were killed at point blank, which means that it was a close range. Yeah. Some of them, there have been claims that some of them had already surrendered. Yeah? And you know when you surrender, I think the due process of law should take place. Because wow. even now, when people have stolen so much money, uh, like NYS, they are arrested, wow. they are taken uh, to court, the right. due process and is we, followed. We, we appear to be following due yes, process. Due process. I'm using the word appear for yes. obvious reasons that we've mm. not yet seen any prosecutions to finality of either of those cases. Yes. Mm. Um, let me get you back now to the analysis of what actually goes on before a police officer pulls a trigger on the person we'd call a victim in this particular case. Do we ever go on to look at perhaps what other options were there for the police officer to react or just by um, default and the fact that the officer had a gun and the other party didn't, we already label victim and perpetrator? Yeah, I think, uh, Vincent, to start with, police officers also have a right to kill you. They have a right under the law. And the only time they're allowed to kill you is if you're shooting at them, so you're endangering their life, or you're shooting at someone else. So you're endangering, you're someone, endangering someone else's life. Right. And then there's this something that they added where if they are protecting property. And that's something even we have a petition in court called the use of force petition that we are trying to kind of challenge that because it doesn't define uh, the value of that property. So probably even if you've stolen a soda, right. they can still kill you. So there are instances that police officers have, have a right to kill, especially if, for example, they came uh, across a gang and the gang was shooting at them. Then police, if they are shooting at them, then police officers should try, first of all, to uh, disable the, the person. But if not, then if there's exchange, then if there's loss of life, that is totally acceptable. But what is happening right now and what we are getting even... Uh, from stories from these areas is that young men, young men like there's one case that had happened in Danora where six young men were killed last year in, this, in, in November. Police were chasing two suspected uh, criminals. Wow. They were chasing them and then all of a sudden uh, this, of, uh, this uh, officer came, shot one of the guy, killed him and then the other one climbed a roof, and then the roof caved in into a family that was sleeping. An uncle and his two nephews who were students. They came in, take, took them out, and kind of uh, is alleged that they shot them. Right. And then there was even a young boy that it is claimed was on top of a tree who was watching what was happening. And then he was brought down because he had witnessed and was killed. Right. And six of them were killed that time. And there was a lot of uh, uh, media coverage that time about that case. And families came out, but they were still being threatened. Right. And now the threats, mm. this is where I'd like to um, pick your mind on. Because, again, <laughs> you are going against 
arguably the state, um, you are going against somebody with a gun. It, it's going to be tough. It can't be easy. Somebody who appears to have authority by the simple fact that they actually get to um, wear that cape and don that uniform. How then do we get victims to speak up and confidently so that they're even assured of their safety post them lodging complaints with such oversight bodies as IPOA perhaps? Yeah, uh, Vincent, I, I'll say that not all police officers are bad. We have so many good police officers. Right. And we also work with police officers, by the way. We try to help them to reform. That is something that IJM partners with them to reform. So even when our colleagues disappeared, it is police officers who investigated the case very well, and the case is in court. In every criminal case that happened, you have an officer, a good officer. But there is this small percentage of officers that have gone rogue. Right. Yeah? That they are low unto themselves. Right. So how do we People get like, the confidence of the victim in yes. this case to mm. speak up mm. and be assured that the same, and, and say the same force that did, of course, now we are looking at a rogue cop in the, in the, in, in the force, mm. um, that did commit the crime against which they are complaining. Mm. How do we get the confidence of a victim to report to the same so, police officers? One, one thing when we do, when you get a case, for example, in IJM, we take this victim through counseling. Wow. Because these people are so brutalized, they are so pain, they have lost a loved one. I'm sure if you've sent people to interview people who have just, uh, they have just lost a loved one, they are so traumatized. So what we do and what we're also encouraging other organizations to do is to cancel these uh, people. You cancel these people for a time until they have emotional healing. Because this person has lost, they have lost, they have lost a loved one through the bullet. Most of them, after canceling, they start, they want to speak up. Like today, the campaign was, the hashtag was, your silence killed, speak up. Right. So victims of these killings, today were at the museum speaking up against this. Like there's a family, in 2016, again in April, that uh, police officer killed eight young men. It is that case is famous. It's called the Mukuru Eight. Very young men. The dad was there today, uh, giving uh, sharing the story about how those young men had been killed. Because these, in 2017, when we met them during community, we had Machoziajana dialogues after the memorial of Willie, Josephat, and Joseph in 2017. We had dialogues in these eight communities to speak to people and find out what is the problem. What is the problem in this area? And during that time, we had like 68 families who came and they were sh shedding tears. They had lost their loved ones, some of them five years ago, and they had never recovered. So we took them through counseling first of all. And out of those 68 cases, we, 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 we went through the files and followed up even with police to find out an airport where these cases had reached. And then 22 of them, we took those cases to court. And now that they know that these cases are in court, justice is finally seemingly coming, then they have this confidence. Yeah. They have this confidence that, uh, that they can stand. And I, I think I also want to thank the IG, the new IG. Right. The new IG I actually, actually want you yeah. to um, mm. just touch on, as we are <laughs> finalizing, mm. I want you to touch on some of the reforms. Uh, you wanted to go ahead and thank the Inspector oh, yeah, General yeah. of Police, <laughs> Hilary Mutiamba. You'll go mm. on to that. Mm. Um, also, on to some of the progress now towards getting justice to these victims mm. uh, that we've made so far as a country. Yeah, I think I think we've really made good progress in uh, in the reforms. I think in twenty last year, the president announced uh, a raft of reforms. Right. Some of them was this: uh, he brought the police under one command, right. so APs and National Police Service, who are KPS, Kenya Police Service, were brought together under one command, and this is a very good thing because right now, if someone disappears, previously we'll go to an AP camp and you ask, the AP don't have an OB. And even if they hold, like Nakina, Willie is suspected they were held in an AP camp, but when people went to look for them at night, they couldn't find them because there were no record, no record of right, them. Right. So this is something uh, very good that now we have uh, a, a command, and right now if someone disappears, the station commander 
uh, bears uh, the, 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 the brand of it, he is answerable. That is a very good, uh, that's a very good uh, reform that has come in. And then there's also this issue of police housing. And we want police to live in very good places. This, that is a, something that uh, we encourage and we hope that the government will release this funding so that police can come and live with you, Vincent, in your, in your hood. I, I, I doubt a police officer will want to kill Vincent, who we see every day. Right. And then there's uh, also a program of uh, psychological counseling for police officers. So many police, also police officers are going through a lot of trauma. Occupational yes, hazards. Yes, occupational hazards. Daily, because right. sometimes they are sent, there's a fire, so many people have been killed, they're the ones who go and carry the body. So their minds are also troubled. Right. And we are happy. Even IGM is also helping to come up, to draft up a... Uh, 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 manuals for counseling for police officers and the IG has been very keen about it, he's been talking about it and that is a very good thing Why? that these officers mental strength can kind of be sober so that they can be able to handle the guns that have been given right. to handle them with care. Because that's a big um, power across uh, borders, yeah. uh, miles away, there are huge mm. discussions about gun policies and so on and so forth. Mm. Uh, internally, we are having our own now of police officers being empowered and being in the right mind state to handle that as well. Mm. Um, in, in, in what's, under what's roof now, um, can one find all the information about the international justice mission? I'm speaking both for the aggrieved and people who potentially want to reach out and speak up more mm. on such situations as forced disappearances and ask. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, even there's a website for under the police reform working group mm -hmm. called the missing voices right. so if you go to the missing voices.or.ke you can be able to go there and if you have any problem there's a tab there that says report right. so you can report your case there and uh, partners around the police working uh, group will be able to take that complaint and if it's something that we investigate and find that it's something that you can take to court, then we can take them to court and then we can have justice at, uh, right. at last. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Joseph yeah. Karaoke, mm. International Justice Mission. Thank you so much for speaking to KUTV News at night. Uh, thank you, Vincent. It was a pleasure to share this with you. Right. And, uh, well, our... Our broken, our hearts break for those families who've been through such situations. But there is help out there. There is intentional reforms going on, both in the voices as well as in the civil rights, uh, in, in the civil society space, as well as now more people are getting to talk about this. And that means progress for everybody. Keep engaging us on Twitter at KUTV Kenya, at V underscore Odundo. We'll be getting to sample your feed on this specific subject as we continue. But for now, we take a breather. We are coming back with updates and spots for you just right now.